Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for VideoCopilot.net and welcome to another very exciting tutorial for a very exciting free plugin. Now, what we're going to be creating is a reflection using a very cool plugin that we've developed. Now, it's very similar to a tutorial called 3D Reflections where we build a reflection and uh, it works in 3D space but technically it's actually a 2D reflection. But it's pretty cool and it can be used for a lot of things but it does take a little bit of time so we decided to build a plugin. Now you may know there is a preset but it's a bit limited and frankly uh, with this new plugin you don't even need to think about that. It's kind of like this new rotisserie oven I got. You know you just fill it with food and you set it and forget about it. Um, you set it and you don't remember about it. Or wait, let me see. You set it, set it, and forget it. <laughs> exactly. Um, what are we talking about? Okay. Now to install the plugin, just copy the vcreflect.aex into your plugins directory, and that's for the Windows. There's a dot plugin version for the Mac. So make sure that you install the proper version for your operating system. It should work with After Effects 7 and newer. Okay, we have a picture of a car here, and I want to add a reflection. So we'll choose Effect, Video Copilot, VC, Reflect. And instantly it creates a nice reflection. The first thing we can change is the floor position. So if we take this bottom point and we move it up, it changes where the reflection starts. Then if we turn, say, the opacity down, you can actually see it's a reflection. We can also play around with the blur. So if we turn the blur amount up, it creates sort of like a directional blur. But we can also use a fall off blur, which creates a blur that kind of gets stronger as it goes away from the floor position. So that looks uh, pretty cool and it renders relatively quickly, although we are going to be doing some optimizing um, over the next uh, month or so. So keep an eye out for that. Now most of the settings here just allow you to play with the reflection. So the distance changes how far the reflection goes from the main source image. So if we take the blur back to directional and change the distance, you can see that it gets shorter or it gets longer. And we have the fall off position. This kind of creates a slightly different fall off curve. We also have a few other options that we'll get into in a moment. But this is the basic idea. But let's take a look at a more challenging example. So here we have a product box. Now the problem here is we don't have a flat floor. It's a little bit of an angle. So let's see what happens. I'll choose Effect, Video Copilot, VC, Reflect. Now the reflection plugin renders from the bottom of the frame. So if we just move the floor position up, you can see we have the reflection of our product box. Now it doesn't quite look right. So let's rotate the angle of the reflection. So we'll just uh, change the value here. Move it away. And you can see that we can get it to line up pretty well. And maybe we move it up a bit. But the problem is our reflection bends. And I'm no physicist, but this uh, just doesn't look right. So we have a skew option. So if we change the skew value, it sort of adjusts the reflection. Now it's not perfect, but it does get you out of some uh, some tough situations and ends up with a pretty decent reflection. So we can turn the opacity down here and maybe turn up the blur amount and it looks pretty good. Now we run into another problem here and that is we've cut off the bottom of our box. So if we change the blend mode to behind original, now our product box renders in front and we have a nice looking reflection. We can also turn the distance down and uh, you know with just a few steps we've got a, a good looking reflection and we didn't have to do any crazy uh, pre-comping or any of that stuff. So okay so here we have another example where we just created some text, added a reflection and it's actually in 3D space. So if we move the camera around we can actually see that this is 3D space. We've got a 3D lens flare. Um, that's actually from our optical flares plugin that uh, we are working on still. But the key here is creating the reflection in 3D space. So let's take a quick look at setting that up. I'm going to create a new composition. And I have a texture here. It's just this uh, kind of grungy texture. 
and we're gonna make it a 3D layer. So we'll turn on the 3D layer switch and we'll hit W and we'll rotate it flat. Then we'll create a new camera. Do uh, you know 24 millimeter, we'll hit OK. Take the uh, camera tool here, move it around, and we'll just create some text. So click in here, we'll type video copilot. Make it large. Now I want to just show you this really quick because uh, it is just a part of After Effects. So if we choose VC Reflect on a text layer, we're going to have some interesting results. Now remember the reflection renders at the bottom of the frame. So the bottom of the frame with the text layer is the size of the comp. So we can move it up. We can play around with the opacity and the blur and you know we can get it to look pretty nice but the problem is if we move the text layer around it no longer stays connected and that's just because of the way After Effects renders text layers so you can use some expressions and kind of tie it together and you know keep the floor position locked on but it's actually easier and uh, you might be a little more sane if you just pre-compose the layer so we'll choose layer pre-compose move all the attributes and hit OK then when we add the reflection plugin we can move it up, bring the opacity down, maybe turn the blur amount up, and we can move it around and we don't have any trouble. So before I use the texture here, I want to actually show you another example of just using a solid layer. So we'll use a colored solid layer. And we'll make it 3D. And we'll rotate it so it's flat and we'll put it below our text layer that we just created. And then we'll make our text layer 3D as well. And so what's happening now is our text layer is intersecting with our 3D layer. So if we move it up, right where the two elements would intersect, about there, you can see we have a little bit of a problem. So in the previous tutorial we used a trick by using an adjustment layer, putting it between the two layers, so that they render in the correct order. And I can maybe create a light. And, you know, scale up this, uh, this brown solid. And uh, we can even add maybe a little bit of a texture. If we use the fractal noise, maybe change the transfer mode to multiply. Or maybe overlay and just turn the opacity down a little bit just gives us a little bit of a texture so we can actually see that uh, this is, you know, 3D. But in this case you can play around with, uh, you know, the settings of the reflection and, you know, get some nice looks. Now, another thing you may want to do is render out the reflection by itself. And that would give you some opportunities to maybe duplicate the layer, control D, shut off the reflection plugin and maybe change the transfer mode of the reflection by itself so that you can control um, you know individual parts by themselves so something to think about well we can take our other texture image and maybe use it instead of the dark solid maybe we'll give it a little bit of a tinting color and let's add a quick background with a ramp Generate ramp. It's uh, at the bottom there. And we'll just do blue and sort of a purplish color. And then we can take the messy texture. We'll change it to screen. And uh, then we'll move our camera around. We want to make sure that our text layer is in line. So we'll take our two layers and we'll move it down. We can go to the front view and then we can just line it up with that floor plane. So we'll just move it down until it lines up. We'll go back to the uh, active camera. And we basically have a, uh, you know, a 3D looking reflection for our, you know, 2D layer. So pretty cool, um, pretty cool thing. Now this brings up another interesting scenario. So if we come over to another comp, let's just create another title. And we'll scale it up, and like before, we'll pre-compose it and move all the attributes. Then we'll add the Video Copilot Reflect plugin. 
change the floor position. And we'll, you know, we'll turn the opacity down, we'll turn the reflection distance down so it's got a nice fall off and maybe turn the blur up a bit. But I want to do something else here. Uh, first, let's change it to behind original so that things like the C here get completed and we don't have to worry about it, you know, cutting off at that point. So just a few options to get what you want. But what if I wanted to create a custom, you know, effect to my reflection? Well, we can do that. We can just simply change it to reflection only. And we can add some effects like stylize scatter. And we can turn that up a bit. And then we can recomposite our title on top. So we can choose effect channel CC composite and just uncheck RGB only. And then our title gets recomposited and we have a little bit of a noise pattern there. We could add anything between this. We could do maybe, uh, you know, our own blur. We could just do a fast blur, um, you know, and then recomposite or do a fast blur and then a scatter and then composite. Um, the idea is you can create a reflection however you want and it will still be one instant of the effect and, uh, you know, you can hopefully do some, some interesting things. So. With that said, I uh, hope you guys found this uh, tutorial useful, but more importantly, I hope you guys have fun with the plugin. I hope it saves you some time, and hopefully you guys can, uh, of course, you know, support the site, check out our other products and plugins. Um, I know they're gonna help you. Just think, the free stuff is this good. Imagine how much the, uh, okay. Anyway, my name is Andrew Kramer, and we'll see you next time.